Hi there. In this video, I want to show you how you can create a compound texture in SketchUp, um, something that you usually might want to do in Photoshop, but you can actually do this quite nicely in SketchUp for, for some textures. The example that I'm going to use here is uh, that of a cross laminated timber, a CLT, which is a new wood product that's uh, you know popular out there <laughs> for which you might need a texture. And as you can see here, it's made up of end grain parts and side grain parts. And we need to kind of get this all set up so that we can use this in a rendering. Um, and again, you know, this is one example, but you can apply the technique to all kinds of other um, applications and not just wood, you know, different materials, all of those kind of things. All right. So we'll get started with that in a minute. Don't forget to check out my book, Architectural Design with SketchUp. It covers all of these topics and makes for a great desk reference. You can find it where books are sold. There's also a link to it on my site, sketchupfordesign.com, together with lots of additional tutorials and news. Okay, here we go. Now, uh, let me explain first what we're looking at here. So there's a photo actually of our construction site. That's, that's our office at uh, UMass Amherst. It's the Over Design Building. And this was under construction and it very nicely shows you one of these cross laminated timber panels. Again, you know, the technique applies to anything, but I want to show you why we're doing what we're doing right here um, based on the material. All right. So if I zoom in here, you can see quite nicely that this material is made up or this big, big plate is made up of uh, 90 degree uh, offset layers of, of lumber basically. So there's there's a lengthwise layer up here on top, there's a cross layer next, and there's another length layer there, cross layer, length layer, that kind of stuff. Um, pretty simple makeup, it's always um, you know an odd number of layers so that it's symmetric for structural reasons. <laughs> and when we um, render something like this here, <clears throat> we may want to have this end kind of grain or end and and profile we're also going to need of course the top profile but i actually found that for something that has parallel lines um, that's a wood product actually any of the flooring textures work pretty well but anyways on the side that won't work because we're going to have end grain we're going to have these um, cross uh, members that that show the end grain all right so that's that's where we're coming from and in terms of modeling this, we're going to go over here and, you know, there's, there's different kinds of textures that you can pull into SketchUp. Let me just pull this one in here. This is a side grain um, texture. Actually, I'm just going to go to texture position so that you can see it all. Um, you know, this is plywood. Actually, I find plywood side grain or basically plywood texture is quite useful for wood products because it just has this never-ending wood grain it's not perfect but it kind of works <laughs> so in any case so that's this one texture is great again for any kind of side grain but once you see end pieces of wood it just doesn't look right so then you typically will want to have some kind of an end grain picture and now what I have here is a nice square end grain picture actually I'm gonna just go again texture position so that you see the whole thing where you know this is the texture it's an end grain you can match the species if you want to but but it'll do for our purposes and it doesn't have to be too varied for us uh, because we're just gonna randomize it basically but when I do any rendering with wood, I always find it's really useful to have a few of these end grain pictures around too, because eventually you're going to need one of those. All right. So, oops, having said that, I'm going to get rid of my texture here. Um, and I'm going to just build this up. All right. So now the way that I want to texture this and create my compound texture is um, just on the ground plane right here. I'm going to do this in 2D. And I'm going to uh, basically redraw the geometry that has different textures. Because as you know, in SketchUp, you know, once you have one face, you can apply a material to that. And then when you have another face, you can apply, apply a different material to it. So what I'm going to do, and I'll just do it down here, 
I'm going to redraw these cross layer um, boards, the end grain. And I'm just going to assume that it's a two by four. It's actually not exactly that, but we're going to skip the details on that. So there's, there's one. And now all we're going to need is a reasonable set of copies of that. And now I've got six of those. It'll be okay. I'm going to make a fairly short one right here just for the example. But, but ultimately, if you don't want to have repeating patterns or too many repeating patterns, you may need a few more of these just so that it's a little cleaner. All right, next one. I'm going to go right here. Um, one foot nine by one and a half inches. So now I have myself a crossing layer. So this is going to have an, a side grain while all of these here are going to have end grain. So now you could actually just create a, comp a compound texture from this because this repeats, you know, since these are alternating uh, layers, you can actually just have this repeat. Um, I might want to have one more set of these here because again, uh, whenever you render anything, there's a, there's a easy chance that you can get repeating textures pretty quickly unless you get a little more variation in there. So I'm just going to make another, whoops, another copy of that. Okay. So now we have ourselves that makeup where we can apply different textures to these different fields. And that's actually all we're going to do <laughs> for this. And then ultimately we're going to combine all of this into one texture. And that is then the repeating texture uh, you can use for any kind of a, you know, cross laminated timber in, in this case. Okay. Next, of course, you're going to need your, your, you know, appropriate textures. I showed you mine already, the end grain and the side grain. So I'm going to start with the end grain and I'm just going to apply this to these parts here, right there. Then I'm going to use my side grain. I'm just going to apply it to one here because I want to show you something. Okay, so um, let's start fixing this. So now uh, this kind of works. I mean, you see, of course, one thing that SketchUp does is it does this contiguous um, texturing, which might work in some cases, but it doesn't work in ours. So we're going to have to randomly move this around by a certain amount. And as you most probably know, in SketchUp, you can easily do that by right clicking on a texture, as long as, you know, the single face is uh, textured. And then you can go to texture and you can go to position. Now, this is a pretty involved tool. You can actually, um, uh, you know, skew textures, scale textures, all of that kind of stuff. But for our purpose here, we just want to um, align the texture. So one thing that we don't want is an overlap like this here. But other than that, I mean, you've all seen wood end grain, right? So <laughs> all you need to do right now is go through this entire thing and position these appropriately. Now, here we go. There's a little plane sound board. There's another plane sound board. Okay. Um, then this one here, I'm going to uh, go up there, little rifts on. <laughs> As you know, these kind of products often have a, a mixture. It's most probably not all quarters on, although we can put a quarters on board in here too. Now, just a quick, quick, um, whoops. A uh, quick uh, word here. I do have a randomizer um, extension out there, random tools, which you can download, which actually does some of this. Um, the idea there is that you can highlight any number of faces. And then this right tool here randomizes texture positions on those. Now, because it's uh, basically the shifting textures uh, in X and Y randomly. It doesn't really work here because our texture, the one that we have is not uh, seamless. And so therefore that tool doesn't work so great here. If you had a seamless texture, it actually does work quite well, but I'm just going to 
tuck this back up here and do all of this by hand. Okay, so now what do we got? Okay, so this last one here looks a little iffy. I'm going to just fix that. And I'm going to go through the rest a little quickly. Okay. That looks reasonably good to me. Um, you could fine tune this and it might not matter that much to be too precise on this one, but as long as we have a certain amount of randomness, we're most probably going to be okay. Okay. So next, let's do the cross layer right here. Um, this bit of texture that I just placed actually looks pretty good. Uh, it's, you know, got enough texture and uh, it's, you know, nondescript enough to, to look okay. Now the one problem there is going to be ultimately we want this as a repeating texture. You know, basically the left edge of this texture should appear on the right edge here and so then of course that doesn't really work so well. You'll see already that there, there would be a seam right there. So now let's make this cross layer a repeating texture as well. And the way we can do that is by simply making it half. Of what it is <laughs> right here so there's now the left part there's right part and that's exactly the same size and so now what i can do is i can delete one of those and then i can take the other one i could actually rearrange the texture i'm gonna basically uh, um, position it just like we did the other one but i'm okay with what we got here so i'm just going to make a copy of that i copied using the move tool went down there and now I'm going to just stretch it the other way around. And all you need to do then is basically type in stretch minus one as a scale factor, and you've mirrored this. So of course, you can use the flip tool for that as well. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take that, I'm going to move it up there. And what we got ourselves now is basically a texture that mirrors in the middle and that works pretty well because you know the grain angle isn't too bad and it will actually mirror at the end as well so it's continuous throughout now uh mine is going to most probably look a little repetitive with a light dark contrast here but you can you can tweak this as much as you want so now we're going to do the same down here this time i'm just going to do it that way. Um, we're going to position that texture a little bit. What do I want? Uh, yeah, so try to avoid something like that there. Yeah. And even that. <laughs> okay, might as well just leave it like this here. So now we've got ourselves a little bit of wood grain and that's just, just fine. All right, so then over here, we're going to get rid of that. We'll move this down, scale it again. Oops. Come here. Minus one. Move it back up and we're fine. All right. <clears throat> so now we got ourselves a texture that will repeat in the Y axis because of the odd layers. And that'll repeat really nicely in the X axis right here. Um, because we made sure that this lengthwise pattern is okay. All right, so now we've got that, and we've got that, we're good. Um, and now we can start basically combining all of these into one texture. And that's where, as a simple tool in SketchUp, <laughs> all you need to do is select everything that we just did. And you don't even have to worry about all the crossing lines and all the, you know, geometry and whatever we have. Just select what we just did, right click on it, and then there's a tool right there, Combine Textures. And then, well, we can say maybe no, leave it there, might as well. And then you'll see the new texture or the new material appear right here under your materials. If you click on the little house, you see what's in your model. That's what you got now. All right, so now let's test it out. Let's use that on some new geometry right here. And I'm going to go to texture position just so that you see what happens now. Okay, so we have ourselves our cross layers. 
we have continuity in that direction, we've got continuity in that direction. We can now apply this any which way we want. So maybe I'll just align it down here. Done. Okay, and we got ourselves a beautiful end grain texture for a CLT. Now, of course, the um, the, the oops, <laughs> trying to select it, but basically the the CLT. Uh, I might as well do the top one here. Wouldn't be or uh, even in its layup, so it would look rather something like this here from the end. You know, it would basically have an odd number of layers. Okay, but like I said, you know, this technique works for other materials too. If you need any combined texture for rendering, it's a great tool to, to, to have in your arsenal. And then um, once you've made this in one file, obviously you must probably want to reuse it at a later point so you can go just go into materials you can click on the little house find the material right click on it and then you could save it either as a texture image at which point you can pull it into any software or you can click on save as and save it as a sketchup material and then basically pull it into sketchup as a material in maybe your own material collection or something like this so it's really easy to reuse this newly created material for um, you know a compound material like as in our case cross laminated timber as you can see here all right so i hope this was useful and i hope you can use this really nicely for rendering and for you know, interesting